Okay, looks like it's the start of a brand new unit. We're leaving our friendly triangles behind for a little while. They might make a guest appearance, you never know. But this unit we're looking at... Circles. We're looking at circles this unit. And so for the first lesson of the unit, we got to figure out, now is this crazy? Even though we're talking about circles, we're going to be talking about straight lines, line segments, and special names that these lines and line segments get. So even though the unit is circles, we're going to be looking at some lines. So first things first, what is a circle? Well, there's your formal definition. Notice that the center is not actually part of the circle. The center kind of helps us figure out where it's located or what its name is. But the circle is actually that ring of points that are all the same distance from the center. In words, we can call it circle D, or we, of course, can use that symbol for circle. Now, we're going to be interested in two-dimensional Euclidean geometry. So whenever you see that word coplanar, it just reminds you that we're just two-dimensional. Everything will be in the same plane. Notice that circles that touch in just one point are called tangent. And they can touch at one point on the exterior, such as circle R and circle S. Or you can have a situation like circle S and circle T, where circle T is inside circle S, but they touch at exactly one point, so we'd say they are tangent circles. Okay, so let's get down to business with the lines and the line segments. Some of these, if not all of them, you might already know. The radius, of course, goes from the center of the circle to the circle itself. A chord is a line segment that has an endpoint at one end on the circle, and the endpoint at the other end is also somewhere on the circle. And the, and the chord itself is inside the circle, except for the points where it touches the circle. And then, of course, if we're so lucky that the chord goes through the center of the circle, we call it the diameter. Now, here comes some terminology that's probably brand new. Notice that the chord is actually part of a secant, right? The chord is a line segment that intersects the circle twice. The secant is a straight line, so of course it goes on forever in both directions, that intersects the circle exactly twice. Now, instead, if the line would intersect the circle just one point, then we call it a tangent. Of course, a line segment could be tangent if it's part of that line. Or a ray could be tangent if it's part of that line. So here, notice that they say, hey, ray AB is also tangent or that segment AB is also tangent because they're part of that tangent line. Usually we'll talk about the tangent line itself. Again, there's that word coplanar reminding us that it's all in the same plane, right? We're two-dimensional, just length and width. A 
here's what's interesting. If you have two circles, they could intersect in two points. They could intersect in just one point. And if it's exactly one point, then those, of course, were tangent circles. We saw that on a previous slide. Except on this slide, they actually have the tangent line drawn. And then what I find most interesting is a situation where there's no points of intersection, but not necessarily the concentric circles. I find the most interesting is when you have two circles that are not concentric and they do not have any points of intersection. If you want to know why I find those so interesting, hang on for just a tiny bit. Now, if we are so lucky that we have a line or a line segment that's actually tangent to two circles, Notice I skip over the word coplanar. I'm just going to assume that we all know that the circles are in the same plane. So we've got two circles, and they happen to share a tangent. It's called a common tangent. Now, for this verbiage on an internal tangent versus an external tangent, if I look at that, it kind of goes in one eye, rolls around my brain, out the other eye. I find it better when I actually have an example that I can look at. So let's figure out how many tangents these circles have. We'll take a look at the tangents and then we'll make it more clear what an internal tangent is versus what an external tangent is. Okay, example A. How many tangents do those circles have? Did you say four? The answer is four. Let's take a look at the tangents. Now the external tangents and the internal tangents are being color-coded. External blue, internal red. Notice there are two external tangents. Those are in blue. All right, the external tangents, I kind of think it was being on the outside of the circles. The internal tangents, those are drawn in red, those go between the circles. And notice that those internal tangents intersect the segment that connects the centers of the circles. Right, that was part of that formal definition on the previous slide that kind of doesn't make too much sense to me. I like to see an actual example instead of just verbiage, right? Those red lines, not only are they tangent to each circle, but they intersect that line segment that connects the centers of the circle. All right, the external tangents, the blue lines, they do not intersect that segment that connects the two centers of the circles. Hey, example B. How many tangents? Are you thinking three? We're still going to have the two external tangents, but because the circles themselves are tangent, there's only one internal tangent. And of course, that internal tangent intersects the segment that connects the centers. Two circles that intersect in two places. How many tangents? Two common tangents and they're both external. So if you look back at example A, that's the one I said I find that case most interesting is when you've got the two circles that do not intersect and they're not concentric. 
because that has the most common tangents. I find that the most interesting case to work with. Now, did you notice something? Example A. No points of intersection for the circles for tangents. Example B. Circles intersect at one point. There are three common tangents. Example C. Circles intersect in two points. There are two common tangents. The points of intersections of the circles plus the number of common tangents will add up to 4. 0 plus 4 is 4. 1 plus 3 is 4. 2 plus 2 is 4. All right. Notice we always have the two external tangents. It's the number of internal tangents that will vary. Okay, so let's actually start seeing what we can do here. If you've got a plane, a line is tangent to a circle if and only if the line is perpendicular to a radius of the circle at its endpoint on the circle. Whew, that's a mouthful. Let's see if a picture clears that up. Okay, so we've got a tangent, line M. Notice it intersects the circle at point P. Of course, there's a radius that goes from Q to P. That's a line segment, it's a radius. The tangent line M is perpendicular to the radius QP. Right, they got it marked with a 90 degree angle there. Right, line M is tangent to circle P if and only if M is perpendicular to segment QP. Ooh, a congruence theorem for external tangents. Now again, if I just see it in words, it doesn't mean too much to me, but if I look at the picture, I say, ah! RS is a tangent segment. If we extended that segment both directions in a line, we'd see it's on a tangent line. Same thing for segment ST. If you extended that segment in both directions, you would see it's a tangent line. And so if both segment SR and segment ST, if they're both tangent, then I know those segments must be congruent. So let's see if we can put all this together. Is segment ST tangent to circle P? Got a nice little drawing there. How can I check and figure out if it's really tangent? I know if it's tangent, they have to be perpendicular to each other. How can I figure out if segment ST is perpendicular to segment PT? Well, is it a right angle? Is angle STP 90 degrees? I see our friendly triangle. How can I tell if it's a right triangle? That's right, our friend Pythagoras comes to town. If I can figure out the value of A squared plus B squared, and then if I can figure out the value of C squared, I can then ask myself, well, do those values match? Are they equal to each other? If they're equal to each other, it's a right triangle. If they're not equal to each other, then they're not. In this case, yeah, 1,369 is equal to 1,369. So sure enough, 
segment ST is tangent to the circle P. Because right, that is a right triangle, because the Pythagorean theorem works. Hmm. We're supposed to find the radius. Now, they inform us that point B is a point of tangency. So we know that line segment is tangent to the circle. And so we know we've got a right triangle. And if we've got a right triangle, our good old friend is going to show up again, right? The Pythagorean theorem. Like, hey, we know those segments are perpendicular. It's a right triangle. And if you're kind of scratching your head like, hey, how come he's got a squared plus c squared equals b squared? Notice where the right angle is. So yeah, we're using the Pythagorean theorem. But the hypotenuse is side b, not side c. Right? Because the radius and the tangent have to be perpendicular. So the 90 degree angle is at angle b. So the hypotenuse is side B. A squared. Well, let's see. Uh, if I'm at angle A, I look directly across. I see R. So A squared is R squared. C squared. That's easy. I look across from angle C and I see 80 feet. So C is 80 squared. And then B. Huh. How long is the side opposite B. How long is that leg? Well, there's a blue section that's labeled 50 feet. There's a red section labeled R. Well, by segment addition, right? We did that back in, I don't know, what, September, probably? Segment addition, I know I can add those two pieces together. So side B, which happens to be the hypotenuse, has a length of r plus 50. So I'll have to square the hypotenuse. And of course, if the hypotenuse is r plus 50 and I have to square that, that means I have to multiply by itself, right? That means I got to do r plus 50 times another r plus 50. And it's time for that classic village people song. Math man, today is the day I say math man. Let's multiply this way. It's fun to F O I L. At least I think that was a Village People song back in the day. Or I think the Village People maybe redid it as YMCA. But of course, I've got to do first. Take the first one from each set of parentheses. R times R. R squared. Outer. I go toward the outer parentheses. R times 50 which of course is 50R. Inner, 50 times R is 50R. Last, 50 times 50, 2,500. Now, if you learned a different method to multiply those and you want to use a different method, that's fine. I've seen students that have kind of uh, put it together as like a, a, almost looking like a Punnett square where you've got r plus 50 across the top, r plus 50 down the left-hand side, and then you multiply and figure out what goes in each of the four quartiles. Of course, that's why we call it the quadratic formula, right? When we multiply that out, notice there's four pieces, F-O-I-L. That's where the quad in quadratic comes from. Combine like terms. 50r plus 50r is 100r. Hmm, what would be a good step now? Hey, what happens if we subtract r squared from each side? Well, how lucky can you get those cancel out? I was afraid we're going to have to set it equal to zero and factor. But because the r squareds cancel out, we can just solve for r. Order of operations backwards. Undo any adding or subtracting. Undo any multiplying or dividing. And it looks like the radius 
is 39 feet. Notice I didn't just stop at r equals 39, because if I look at the diagram, the dimensions are labeled in feet. And so if the dimensions are labeled in feet, I should really put my answer in terms of feet. So the radius is 39 feet. Hmm. Find the value of x. Now again, if all I had was the picture, I really couldn't do anything. But there's a description that tells us that both of those line segments are tangent to circle C. And if you remember, if we've got two line segments that are both per, uh, that both <laughs> both tangents, if I get my tongue untwisted, two segments are both tangent. And they form an angle, right? They intersect at R. We know they have to be equal to each other in length. And right? so segment RT is congruent to segment RS. In other words, the length RT equals the length RS. 3x plus 4 equals 28. This looks like it's uh, much less algebra. We don't have to do any FOIL or any multiplication that way. Undo the adding or subtracting. Undo the multiplying or dividing. X equals 4. In diagram, I don't see any label of feet, inches, or anything else, so I can just say it's 4. Got a lovely little worksheet to work on first. And then if you complete that worksheet, and got a little bit of spare time, got IXL, deals with tangent lines.